All right, we're back. Um, as I told you in my last video, the Charlie Brown theme song, we're going to go over that today. I just want to do something a little different. I've been messing around with this for a little bit and wanted to uh, do a little bit this is some different things. And as you'll probably notice right away, the sound is a little different. It was on the last video. I'm trying to experiment with the best sound. Um, I was using a little Tascam PR10 recorder on the last one. And it seems to be picking up a lot of room noise. There wasn't a fan on or anything. It was just, I guess, the actual room noise. I don't know. Um, but I was using that. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see the Tascam a little better. Um, Tascam PR10. Just recently got it. My wife gave it to me for my birthday a while back. And uh, so it's a pretty good little doohickey here. I'm not going to review it or anything. I haven't had a lot of time to check it out. But um, I was trying to work with that and. Right now I'm using the lapel mic from Radio Shack, plugged straight into the Kodak ZI8 camcorder. It's got an uh, external mic input, which is great, and I'm using it. And uh, so I thought, well, I'm just gonna experiment with sound. What I did like about the task, I had a little, a little sock around it to try to prevent the noise, but it uh, don't know if it worked or not. Like I said, on the, uh, the camcorder, you can hear everything on it, but uh, when I put it on the computer speakers, it's totally different. So it may not sound that bad when I look at it in the final production. But anyway, I'm messing with that and uh, trying to figure out what sounds best. I do like the sound of the guitar. It sounds more of acoustic live sound better than it does with this. With this, it sounds, if you'll listen to the last one and you'll listen to this one, it sounds a lot more muffled. Um, it's a little more muffled, uh, even though I don't know if it, uh, it's, I don't know what it is, but uh, this sounds better with vocals. And if I tried to do the external, external mic into the Tascam back to the camera, it, it still picks up a lot of noise. So I don't know if I need to get a better lapel mic or just whatever, but I do know that I like the guitar sound a lot better using the, the Tascam. Um, so you guys be the judge what do you like better do you like the sound of this the muffled guitar or would you rather can you can you you know handle a little bit of room noise and me sounding like i'm in another room almost because you know it's it's a little it's a little distant away can you handle that better just for the sacrifice of a good um good vocal mic to get better guitar tone or would you guys rather have the lapel mic with this muffled kind of sound and tone i don't know it's 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 you know touch and go i don't want to have bad audio quality uh all the time but at the same time i would like to hear the true tone of this guitar so what i may decide to do then i know i'm rambling i'm sorry guys what i may decide to do is just do the actual songs with the task of the performances and then come back and do the the uh lesson video with the lapel mic. I may just do that because that way you'll have to hear, sit through a whole thing, listen to hissy sounds. But anyway, let's get on to the lesson. I know I've talked a lot. A um, lot of new changes. Uh, I probably already mentioned it, I don't know, but I have a new lighting set up I've been working on and I've got three point lighting set up. I've been looking on uh, some YouTube professional uh, lighting setup uh, ideas and been messing with that. And uh, so, plus I'm also going to go ahead and do this right now. I'm going to be using a zoom feature and I'm getting used to it. So I may cut everything off. I don't know. This is what I consider one time zoom. And then I'll go back out and then I'll do a slot tap and then another slot tap. And this should be two time zoom. Don't know where it's going to cut off or anything. But I'm going to start using the zoom in my camcorder. I get tired of not having, you know, in my Texas Blues guitar course, I had a professional setup and everything to where, he, you know, he had two cameras, one focused on me and one focused on my hands. I don't have that here. What I have is one camcorder. So I'm going to have to, I'd like to make it as more professional looking as I can. So uh, I said it once and I'll say it again now for, for real. On with the lesson. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Mm -hmm. 
so we can see what's going on here now. First of all, we are in drop D. And this is the Charlie Brown theme song. Basically, everybody knows the, the basic melody. I can't go into the whole jazzy section. If you listen to the piano, he stops at the end of the melody and goes into complete different jazz chords and everything. I'm not aware, not sure what that is, but I can tell you what I've did, what I've uh, uh, played around with. So the main melody, melody is in D. I'm on a, the D string in the second and fourth fret. finger that in one or two ways. You could play the D like this, like normal, or you could play what we've discussed before is the bluegrass D shape. And then just hold these two fingers down here and go. Uh, the difference on that is, is that you're now you're having to release the G string to hit the, the D string. And that might not sound exactly what you're going for, so I usually just typically use my pinky there. And then what I do is I bar this so that I can have that uh, have that G string as well. Okay, um, but at the whole time, all the whole same time, you're having to play the melody while you're playing the bass. The bass line goes like this, and we're on drop D, so we got a low, low D. And it's just those three strings, D, or the E string, the A string, and the D string. You do that twice, and you can decide on which way of cross-picking you want to use. You can go down, two downs and up. Or you can just completely cross-pick where you go down, up, down cross over the middle string and go up, down, up, cross over, down, up, down, cross over, up, down, up. I find myself kind of doing a mixture of both when I'm trying this. The first time it's, and then the next one is, the uh, second fret of the A string. The difference is there is it kind of messes with your picking because now you're not going to a separate string, you're going to one string and switching directions. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So let's back that out and do a two time zoom real quick. Hopefully this will work. Pay attention to this hand right here majority uh. so we start with a down one two three four five six notes and we're going to end with an upstroke so down up. the same thing on the next set down up thing I'm doing is um, is I'm keeping the bass going while I'm playing that melody that way there won't be that little pause I want to keep that bass going so advanced so work on that a little bit and so while, here's how it goes together and now that's another thing I'm doing is I'm hitting the beat the, the, the D note Now that brings us to this next chord. Actually, before we get to that, let's do it the way I do it. Now 
Now the second thing we didn't get to just then is after we get to that part, we're gonna do this second cross picking thing again. We'll do that for that much. And then we go back. Now this is an F chord, but because we're tuning the string down a whole step, we have to compensate by moving our F note up. So it's the same way if you're playing a G. Instead of this G, you're having to move this up. So now we compensate. We move that up. So we're going to move that down, and what I'm going to do is you're going to do the, uh, the third finger, the pinky finger, and the uh, middle finger. So the ring or third finger goes on the third fret of the E string. That's your F note for the key of drop D. And then your pinky is going to go right underneath that on the third fret of the A string. And then this is going to come back, kind of like you're making an E, but on the, the, the lower set of strings. So that's going to go back and behind those on the second fret of the D string. And then the, the other two I'm going to leave open. The other three strings I'm going to leave open. Kind of give you like a um, a major seven, major thirteenth sound. Now what you could do is come straight here. And do it there instead of going. Doing a quick switch. When you get to that open D note. It's in this chord. So we use that as the melody, the whole chord. And then we put this finger down, the middle finger down, the second fret. And I just mess around with the other strings. Nothing really, no pattern or anything like that. So that's the basics of that song. Now we get to the, the next part, the B section here. This, we're going to the key of A, but we're going to use, like I said, the G note is usually here, but we're going to use it here. You, all it is is walking up from a G to an A. But instead of doing that, it'll sound better if you just hit these two top notes, the same spot they were here. You've got the, both these fingers uh, on the fifth fret, the ring fingers on the E string, the middle finger or the pinky fingers on the A string and it's kind of like a power chord you're going to hit it three times one two three and then the four is an A chord so you're going to hit for that it's kind of like an A power chord too I'm hitting the A string D string the G string and uh, I'm just barring that there it's a really good way to play an A because there's so many things you can do with that if you're playing a pentatonic scale. All because of that right there is barred. So that's a really good uh, habit to work on is barring that finger down there for an A chord. Unless you need a suspended chord. So it's kind of a quick switch, a little bit of a stretch. Now this is all you're doing is you're hitting the two notes, the D and the G string right here. And then you're hammering on to the, that's the second fret, you're hammering on to the fourth fret on the same strings using your ring finger and your pinky finger. But in between each, you're going to hit that A note. Total of four times I think. One, two, three, four. Except the last one you don't you don't hammer on, you leave it the straight A. One, two, three, four. And you do that three times. And it goes back to the Okay. 
Now rather than having a huge video, uh, I'm going to start splitting these and try to cut these off pretty soon because I have a chance to, I have a tendency to ramble like I did the first of this video. And I don't want to spend all day trying to upload a video that's 30 minutes long. Uh, it takes forever to do that and I just rather have the convenience of you guys not having to sit through a 30 minute video. Uh, and the convenience of you can just watch through these videos as you go along. So the second part uh, of this I'm going to release in the next video. So we'll do it as Charlie Brown part two or something like that. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys for watching. Check out my new Texas Blues mini courses that are now available worldwide. Uh, Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar.com slash mini courses. There's no dash, it's all one word mini courses. And uh, check those out. And you can also find it on the homepage, Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar.com. And uh, if, maybe if you're not into blues, maybe you know somebody that is. Uh, it's not just for just only blues, though, it, it, it's a really key focus on lead playing for the electric guitar. So um, it'll give you all you need for that. So check that out and recommend that to somebody or, you know, send people there because uh, that really helps out and uh, i'm really proud to to be able to, to do that so stay tuned for the next video we'll go over the second part of it appreciate you guys